In this video, I'm going to break down all the tips and tricks on how to care for the Peperomia caparata, including the Peperomia pink lady. So keep on watching. Hello my fellows, thanks for tuning in. Some of you have been asking me for a Peperomia Pink Lady Care Guide video. You asked and I listened, so here it is. Before we get started, if you're new here, my name is Grace and I post plant videos every week. So if you don't want to miss out on any of them, make sure you're subscribed and ring the notification bell if you haven't already. And yeah, let's get straight into it. I'm going to break down this video into several categories as I usually do and we're going to be covering the whole gambit from light, water, soil mix, humidity, temperature, fertilizer, propagation, and all that jazz. Alright, so let's start off with light. I'd say these guys need a fair amount of light and bright and direct light is best. I personally haven't given this harsh or like direct sunlight because the leaves can be quite delicate and I don't want the foliage to burn. But if you don't have access to bright and direct light, I find that grow lights actually work really well for these guys too. Ever since I put this in my Mars Hydro Grow Tent, I noticed that it started giving me these really pink leaves, whereas previously it only gave me like creamy blush pink leaves in the past and I'll insert some photos for you to have a look at in comparison. But yeah, I don't know if it's because it responds better to the grow lights or if it's just at the stage of maturity where it's pushing out pink leaves. I mentioned this in previous videos, but peperomias have very fine root systems that rot very easily when overwatered. But what I didn't elaborate on in the past is that their roots will also suffocate over time as the soil compacts on them. So say for example, you're watering your plant from the top, the soil will eventually compact on the roots if you don't aerate the soil. That is why you see some people aerating the soil with chopsticks or the stick of some sort. Personally, I don't really do all of that extra work. I just opt to bottom water my peperomias and that's really helped to keep it alive and thriving. And the reason why bottom watering works is that they can choose to soak up as much water as required through capillary action and with the excess water that's still sitting there after two hours you can just tip it out and that's it and when it comes to when to water your plants you can actually tell when they're a little bit dehydrated because they'll start to get a little bit limp and they may even start to flop a little bit so if you observe your peperomia and you can sort of like feel for the recoil you can really easily tell when it needs a water now let's talk about soil mix We've established that peperomias have very fine root systems that suffocate easily in compact soil. So what this means is that they will do a lot better in chunkier or airier mixes that have a lot more oxygen flow around the roots. Alternatively, I've heard people have really good success converting some of their peperomias to semi-hydro, but personally, I haven't had the guts to do that yet, so I can't really vouch for it. But if you have and if you had success with it, please do let us know in the comments below. In my experience, these guys are not too fussy when it comes to humidity. However, it might help them to produce larger leaves from what I've heard. So if that sounds appealing to you, then I'd suggest you experiment with higher humidity for these guys. When it comes to higher humidity, however, it's really important to have good airflow for these guys. Their leaves and stems don't really like to get wet and stay wet, and they can actually rot quite easily. So that's why it's really important to have good air circulation to evaporate any excess moisture that could be sitting on the leaves. And that's another reason why I prefer to bottom water these guys so I can avoid from accidentally watering their leaves. But sometimes it is inevitable, so if you do have good airflow, you don't have have to worry. In my opinion, these guys aren't really sensitive to temperature changes or changes in the season. So it's not something that you really need to worry about when it comes to temperature, as long as you keep it away from extreme heat or the frost. Okay, when it comes to fertilizer, I do feed this with diluted worm wheat every time I bottom water it, but you can use whatever fertilizer you have to hand as long as you dilute it according to the instructions. Lastly, let's talk about propagation. 
There are many different ways you can propagate your peperomi caparatas. Others have had success with leaf propagations, but personally, I propagate via stem cuttings. And I know you guys will be asking me for this, so let me give you a demo of exactly how I do it. First, you'll need to make sure that you pick a healthy leaf to propagate from because remember, not all propagations are going to be successful. So the healthier the leaf, the higher the chances of a successful propagation. So for me, I think I'm gonna propagate this leaf right here. It's a little bit discolored, but it's actually a healthy leaf. So you can use the scissors for this, but I usually just use my fingernails. I'm just going to pick this off and there you have it, your first leaf to propagate from. And I'm gonna go in and pluck out a few more. So I'm gonna pick this one as well. This one here. And this one here. Just a tip when it comes to propagating these stems, you want to make sure that it is as long as possible so that if any part of it rots, you can just cut it off and try again with the rest of the stem. Next, you want to have a vessel with clean water and what you want to do is just prop your leaf or stem cuttings in the water, making sure that the leaf isn't actually submerged in there because it will eventually rot. And just wait, over several months, you'll start to see roots forming and soon after, pups will also start to show up underwater. At this stage, you might be eager to pot it up, but I'd actually wait until the root systems are established enough to survive the transition into soil. And here, you can see some of my propagations that I have previously transferred into soil that are starting to take off and thrive. It's super simple to propagate in this method. I have actually propagated so many now. I think I have almost 10 baby Peperomia pink ladies. And yeah, if you end up trying this out, do let me know in the comments below. All right, before we end this video, quick disclaimer, these tips and tricks work well for me in my environment. Please bear in mind that my environment might be different to yours. But anyway, I hope you found this tips helpful and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more, you might enjoy my other care tips videos like these ones here, so click to check them out. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, stay well my fellows.